So, what's so special about this house? Does anybody know? Comment below. So I'm gonna tell you in about a second. Road Trips with Yogi starts now. Hey everybody, Yogi here. I'm doing well, I hope you're doing well. We are still in Columbia, Tennessee. And today, we decided to stop by the James Knox Polk House. It's closed. We picked the worst days to come to these places. But uh, this is where the parents of the 11th president of the United States occupied this property in 1816, at which time young Polk was 21. This was his home from his University of North Carolina College graduation in 1818 until his marriage to Sarah Childress in 1824. So this is the ancestral home of James Polk. Now again, it's closed. So unfortunately, there it says, ancestral home. Registered National Historic Landmark. Uh, Polk was the 11th President of the United States. Let's see if anybody's home. I'm not gonna do that. Let's try to get a peek inside. Oh, it's dark in there. I don't think we're gonna be able to. Can you see in there? That's a little sneak peek in just side of James Polk's house before he became president. This tree is really cool. Is this an acorn tree? I don't know. I see little bulbs on there. I don't know if those are acorns. There is a chain here. Unfortunately, you can't go back here. You have to purchase tickets to the home. And over here is the Polk Home Visitor Center, and there's a museum shop as well. Ooh, they got a cool looking staircase, though. Let's peek inside that window there. You see inside? Look at that staircase. Draped with the American flag. And then you have the museum shop, Shoppy. So Maria Polk Walker lived here from 70, 1798 to 1876. And Ophelia Polk Hayes lived here from 1812 to 1851. So this is also part of the Polk property. They have a lot of neat buildings here in Columbia, Tennessee. As I would really love to see more support from Patreon is I can do stuff like this during the week, not on the weekends. You can see these places when they're open. Be able to go to more places and show you more exciting things, folks. So again, please consider donating monthly at patreon.com for as little as five dollars a month. Somebody put <laughs> a little is that Santa Claus or an elf? Oh maybe Santa Claus is an elf. But that's there. This is the storyboard for the James K. Polk house. I am just going to leave it like that for a minute. And you folks can let me back it up a little bit. Pause it, kind of look at it on your big old TVs. So on the end here it says Polk became ill in Nashville and died there on December 16th, 1862. His older brother's widow, Sarah C. Polk, arranged with Union General William S. Rosecrans to have his body transported to Columbia to be buried in Greenwood Cemetery. Here's another building on the property. Uh, I'm gonna put my camera up to the, I don't know what's in here, I can't really see, but take a peek inside. This is also, I believe, the property as well. We've got a garden here. So just picture back in, the early 1800s 
what was here and what wasn't here. <laughs> this was probably considered farmland back then. It's just amazing how much has built up since then. That's kind of a cool building. That's a church. Yeah, there's lots and lots of churches in this area. Ooh, I like the color on here. We are in Spring Hill, Tennessee. Why are we in Spring Hill, Tennessee? Well, we're not going to the Saturn plant because they no longer make Saturn cars in Spring Hill, Tennessee. However, we are here at Spring Hill Battleground. This is a battlefield. Uh, there is a little sign over here that I want to check out. Confederate attacks at Spring Hill, November 29th, 1864. On November 29, 1864, General Nathan B. Forrest approached Spring Hill from the east at 11.30 a.m. From here, General James Chalmers launched an attack to seize the Columbia National Pike to the west. Surprised by strong Union forces, Chalmers was defeated. Upon his return, Forrest noted they was in there sure enough. Wasn't they, Chalmers? At 3.45 p.m., Agent General Patrick uh, Claiborne's Division attacked the Union forces and defeated Brigadier General Luther P. Bradley's brigade. The Union resistance and darkness halted Claiborne's pursuit of Bradley's brigade. So we got a little bit of a walk. It's warm. It's 90s, 90-ish. No breeze, but at least it's not the sun beating down on you either. Some picture boards up here, up ahead. We're going to walk up this hill, check it out. Now this is the first time I've ever been to an actual battlefield, so this is interesting. Um, unfortunately, the plaques are covered covered in poo. You'd think they would uh, clean this up and take care of this. Uh, yeah. So I'm not going to read that one. If you want to try to read it through the bird poop, go right ahead. Too bad that they don't keep this clean. Just sitting on a bench, taking in the beauty of this area. You know, it's unfortunate that people died here. I don't know. How many people did? I was kind of doing, trying to do a little research on the area. Doesn't really say. This is all farmland. There's a jet plane. Yeah, we're gonna be getting some storms later. We got some serious clouds forming. Here's a cannon. A relic, a symbol of the, the battlefield. What's inside there? You see what's inside there? Let's do it again. Some rusty stuff. Now, I don't know if this is an actual cannon that was used during the battle or just a prop. Unfortunately, there's no signage or nothing on it. We got Federal Defense of Spring Hill. Again, <laughs> it's covered in birdie excrement so said there were about 1,700 men on one side 2,000 on the other doesn't really say here how many were killed the trail does continue up that way but considering how hot and humid it is today we are gonna pass we are just going to head up, head back to the car. But it's a beautiful area. Beautiful clouds, beautiful hills. Scenic, very scenic. 